This video is for lesson 2.4. Please make sure that you're using a pencil to take these notes and go ahead and write in the learning target. The learning target here is I can use postulates involving lines, points, and planes. And in this lesson, we're going to be dealing with several different postulates. So if you take a look here, it's going to be postulates 5 through 11. And I don't want you to think that we're skipping any postulates. Those postulates were taught in other lessons. So we may not have called them uh, postulate 1, postulate 2, etc. But those were the things where we were saying that we could, um, you know, there was a postulate that said, let's add two segments together. It was called the segment addition postulate, where we were actually adding two lines, segments together and um, finding the length or renaming it. Um, we also had a postulate that said that we could add two angles together. It was called the angle addition postulate. So just want to remind you that a postulate is a statement that we believe to be true without any proof of it. So we're just going to believe that these statements are true. We're not going to try to prove that they are true. We just need to use them for some of our work that we're going to be doing with different diagrams and things like that. So in the vocabulary section here, we have uh, that a line is a line perpendicular. Remember, this symbol means perpendicular to a plane. Okay, so a line is perpendicular to a plane if and only if the line intersects the plane in a point and is perpendicular to every line in that plane that intersects at that point. All right, and we also want to uh, make sure that we know about each one of these postulates and in the classroom you'll see a poster that has all these postulates on it so you have something to refer to um, but you do need to understand what each one of them means so that you can apply this information to the different diagrams that you may see so postulate 5 says through any two points there exists exactly one line so there if there's two points and that means there is only one line through those two points. There's not more than that. And postulate 6 says a line contains at least two points. So a line contains at least two points. All right, so you have to think of it in the way that it's written. So postulate 5 and postulate 6 are super close in their meaning, um, but postulate 5 has these two dots, right? It says through any two points exists exactly one line. So we just want to remember two points turns into a line and in postulate 6 it says a line contains at least two points. So we have a line first and then we can say there are two points on that line that create or make up that line. Okay so postulate 7 says if two lines intersect then their intersection is exactly one point. All right, so if two lines intersect, there is only one point where they intersect. Postulate 8 says through any three non-collinear points, there exists exactly one plane. Okay, so now we're switching over and talking about planes. Uh, again, postulate 8, three non-collinear points means that they're not all in the same line, and so therefore there exists exactly one plane. And postulate 9 seems really close to postulate 8, but it is a plane that contains at least three points. So a plane contains at least three non-collinear points. So notice what I did. In a postulate 8, I drew the three points first, which creates a plane. And then in postulate 9, I drew the plane first, and then I drew the three non-collinear points. So these are kind of a little bit of a converse of each other, but you really want to pay attention to which one, you know, means what. But like I said, I'll have a poster of all these postulates in the classroom for you to refer to. And postulate 10 says, if two points lie in a plane, then the line containing them lies in the plane. All right, so let's just think about that for a second. If two points lie in a plane, then the line containing them also lies in the plane. So that means that the line itself also lies in that same plane. 
And finally, postulate 11 says, if two planes intersect, if two planes intersect, then their intersection is a line. Now this is similar to the one that says that uh, number 7, so postulate 11 and postulate 7 are similar because they say about intersection. So this one is talking about uh, lines intersecting and having a point be the point of intersection. But postulate 11 says that if two planes intersect, then their intersection is a line. And remember, we drew some pictures a little while back um, that had this intersection. You know, if we were having two planes intersect, um, this is what it would look like. And if they're intersecting, then again, this is their intersection right here. So I think I had an example in class where I took two pieces of paper and put a slit in each one of them and connected them. This line right here is the intersection of the two planes that are intersecting right there. Now as we were going through the postulates, I drew little tiny pictures to indicate what that would look like in picture form. So now in example one, they're going to ask us to identify a postulate illustrated by a diagram. So we need to just state the postulate. You can just give the number of the postulate illustrated by the diagram. So if there is a line that exists, then there are two points on that line. Okay, so that's how we would have to read this. If a line exists, then two points are on the line. And if we go, go back to those postulates, we can see that a line contains at least two points. So that's going to be postulate 6. Alright, so if we have a line, there are at least two points on the line. Postulate 6 says a line contains at least two points. And for part B here, it says that there are three non-collinear points. So if three non-collinear points, then there is a plane that those three non-collinear points lie on. And so even though it looks pretty close between postulate 8 and postulate 9, we need to be looking for the three non-collinear points first, and then the fact that there is exactly one plane that those three non-collinear points lie on. So this is going to be an example of postulate 8. Alright, for the on your own practice problems, I would like you to still use the postulates, and you're looking for postulates that match up with the diagrams down here. And this one you can sort of read as if there are two points, if there are two points, then there exists exactly one line. Okay, so look for that postulate. And then for part two here in the On Your Own, if there is a plane, then there are three non-collinear points that exist on that plane. So you're going to want to look for that order of the information in the postulate. Here's a drawing that represents what we were just talking about. This line is perpendicular to the plane, and, and every line on this plane is perpendicular to this particular line that goes through that same point. So if I was to show you that, this line here is perpendicular to that other red line that's going through the plane. Same thing with this one, it's perpendicular to this line. Any line that goes through that same point is perpendicular to that red line. So we're not talking about, you know, this line over here, but it has to go through this same point that the red line, the perpendicular line. And I hope you noticed that I drew a perpendicular symbol on there to show that that red line is perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so this is kind of a description of that first vocabulary item. And on the back of your paper, we have example two. We need to use the information to sketch a diagram. It asks us to sketch a diagram showing line AB 
intersecting line CD at point E so that AB is perpendicular to CD. All right, so we're going to draw line AB. And remember, we need to put some points and call those points AB because any line contains at least two points. And then we're going to draw line CD. We want to put line or point C and point D on this line. And then we want to show that they are perpendicular and that they intersect at point E. So you just have to be able to understand the terminology here. So we need to understand that what intersecting means. We need to understand what this symbol means, perpendicular at a 90 degree angle. And then we need to make sure that we include the points that make up the line. Okay, and you should be able to do this also on your own. So I would like you to redraw the same diagram, except we want to show that AE, segment AE, is congruent to segment EB. So just include the markings, okay? So include markings that actually show that those two segments are congruent. All right, so you're going to redraw the picture that we did in example two, and then just include the correct markings. We're going to go on to example three. Example three says that we need to interpret the diagram. So this diagram here, which of the following statements cannot be assumed from the diagram? All points shown are coplanar, which means that they're all on the same plane. So all of these points are on one plane. And is it true or false that the line FG is perpendicular to the line CD? So in other words, is angle CEF 90 degrees? Well, if I look at angle CEF, that's this angle right here, it may or may not look like 90 degrees to you, but is there a marking on the diagram that says for sure that that is a 90 degree angle. And I don't see a marking on that diagram at all, so I cannot assume it. There's no perpendicular mark, so we cannot assume that that's true. All right, and then we also have this statement that point C, point E, and point D are collinear. Do you see if point C, E, and D all are on the same line? That's what we're looking for here. And it does look like, I know some of you have asked me before, is this really a point? Because there's no dot, but that is a point. And point E is also a point on that line. So it looks like all of those uh, lie on the one line. So yes, we can say that this is true. Because they're all on the same line. And then we're going to use this same diagram but you're going to be stating whether these statements are true or false for the on your own practice numbers four through nine. So please make sure that you look at this diagram and identify if these statements are true or false. If they are false, I want you to explain. Okay, so tell me why if you say that it's false, then you need to put an explanation about why it is false. If you have any questions, please make sure you ask in class. Use the space below to write the questions that you might have.